Hi guys, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here with me today. We have a special video in honor of the holiday season coming up and that is a DIY Christmas stocking. So cute. These are so easy to make, so quick. Um, this is the one I made in the video, but yesterday I actually made a few. I made this one out of a bunch of different remnants and a dish towel I got in clearance for a buck. So you can really make them out of anything. You don't have to go out and buy expensive fancy fabric. Just look at what you have in your remnants. Um, I had a bunch of children's fabric and uh, got the liners out of the remnants section in my craft store and at Walmart. This is one I made last year for my husband's cowboys and it's got the liner. So um, we, the pattern that we'll be using is the Christmas stocking. Again, you can use your own pattern. So, um, I used this one I got at Walmart for a dollar, just a cheap little stocking to use as my pattern, but you can use any pattern. You can make them high heel shaped. You can use something you print off online. You can use a stocking you already have. You can freehand it. So really be creative. So you're going to use your, your template pattern with a cuff, you're gonna have a liner, and you're gonna have a loop. So these are actually really nice, thick stockings. Um, they look beautiful and they're completely customizable. So if you wanna learn how I made this, then just keep watching. Okay, so here's what you're gonna need. You're gonna need a template stocking. You can either use a stocking like this one I got at Walmart for a buck. Um, baby stocking, super large handmade stocking, or you can download a paper template, print it, draw it, and use that, or you can, you know, just freehand your own. You're gonna need your top um, or your focus fabric, and that's gonna be your top fabric. You're gonna need your liner fabric, that's gonna be what's inside. You're gonna need your fluffy piece, and for this one, I didn't get a fluffy piece, so I'm gonna use the green as my fluffy piece, my non-fluffy fluffy. And then you're gonna need either a ribbon or a piece of fabric, just a leftover remnant from what you're cutting will work, um, or just any type of ribbon. You can see my previous tutorial on how to make a stocking out of anything. Um, I used to use regular ribbon for that one. And that's gonna be your loop. You're going to not necessarily need a mat, but I like to use one because I'm working on my beauty vanity, hence my makeup in the background some pins, scissors, a rotary cutter if you need one, but it's optional, it's not necessary, and then your sewing machine. So let's get started. First, we're gonna take our top fabric, and I just have two fat quarters that I got for 97 cents at Walmart. And I'm going to place them front sides together. And in this case, the writing goes in all different directions, so there's no real up and down, but I'm gonna line them up as, as close as I can here. Then I'm going to get my liner fabric. I'm gonna do the same thing, and I'm gonna lay them on top of each other. So I have my liner fabric with the insides facing each other, the wrong side out, same thing. I have my fo focus fabric with the right sides facing each other and the wrong sides out. And I'm gonna line those up, like I said, as nice as I can here. You can iron this out if you want to have more of a precise lineup. Okay, I'm just gonna get that as close as possible. Then you're going to grab your template stocking. I like to fold my little ribbon in. Put that in an area where you have fabric around it because you're going to cut it and you're going to leave a little room around when you cut it. Grab your pins and pin that in a few spots all the way through so your fabric stays down to your template. I usually just do mine in about three spots. you can use your rotary cutter or your scissors and just cut out 
the square that you're going to be working with so you don't have all this extra fabric that you're working with. Be careful, I got a little incident that happened earlier. In this case, I'm just going to trace over my where my green meets my red, so I just have one type of working space here. And I'm going to set this to the side. Now these remnants you can use to grab a piece for your ribbon if you would like. Now what I'm going to do is take my scissors and I'm going to cut all the way around, leaving about a quarter of an inch on all sides. Now if you want a larger stocking, cut out with half an inch or an inch around all sides. Um, but make sure you leave yourself a little room to work with. So, get to cutting. So, let's take our pins out. At this point, you'll always have some remnants of fabric that you can use for your loop. Whether you want your lining, this side, your fluffy piece, whichever you would like. At this point is when I'm going to measure my fluffy piece. So you want your, I'm gonna use this liner. You want your fluffy piece to be about eight inches long so that when you fold it in half, it's about four inches long. And then you need it to be the width of your sock. So for this one, looks like I'm not, I might barely just make it on that one. Okay, so we're just going to use what we've got here. And hope this is long enough to make it work. Now, this is my stocking. That should just about work. All right, so there's my fluffy piece. So now we're going to do the sewing. Separate your liner piece, your focus piece, your fluffy piece, which is your, you know, your ring, and your um, your loop. And you know what? I think I'm going to use the red for my loop. Here's my loop. Fluffy piece, loop, liner, focus material. Let me start just so I have red thread on the top on the bottom. I'm going to zoom in a little so you can see what I'm doing here. We're going to take the focus material and we're going to sew all the way around. Now you can pin this if you would like. I kind of just eye it and let the foot be the guide for me. And it always turns out decent for me. But if you would like this to be perfect, you can pin this all the way around. What we're going to do is start at the corner, go all the way around the sock, and that is front sides facing each other. So the side that you want to be out is inside. Wrong sides up, right sides in. We're gonna go all the way around the length of the stocking, leaving obviously the top part over. Specifically, where it has curvy parts and we're just going to cut right in between the fabric pieces before you get to the line that you sewed and what that is going to do is when we flip it inside out here in a second it's going to allow it to have a crisper line and not have as much bunching up but be careful not to cut over any of the places that you just sewed because you'll cut a hole in your stocking all right, go ahead and set that to the side. We're going to cut, we're going to sew the liner. 
We're going to do the same thing we just did, except we're going to leave a hole open this, this time. So what I do, I'm getting my liner sock ready, just to show you here. And on one side, I leave a hole big enough for my hand to fit through. So I put a pin, and I put another pin, and this is to remind me not to sew, and it's big enough for my hand to fit through. So we're gonna sew the length of the stocking except for where those two holes are, just like we did with the red, leaving a space in the green, those holes. Now we're going to sew our green. This is our fluffy piece. What we're going to do is we're going to fold that just like it would go around our stocking. We're going to fold that and then we're going to sew that together. So line up the sides as neatly as you can. And then sew as close to the edge as possible. And flip that inside out. So now it is right side out and you have a crisp seam showing. You can press that if you would like, iron it. I just leave mine as is, and we're going to do our ribbon. All we're going to do for this is fold it lengthwise. We're going to fold it right sides together. We're going to sew across the top and down one side. trim close to the seam if you have a big gap like I do of fabric because you don't want it bunching up and you're going to flip it. And you're going to turn this inside out and the easiest way to do that is just get a little separation in the fabric here. Take something along like your scissors, a pencil, uh, I've used eyeliner before. Stick it in and make like a little kind of a, a hole. Open this up and make a little bit of a hole. You can use your scissors. Once I've got a little bit of a hole in there, you can use a pencil, you can use eyeliner, and then you're just gonna pull the fabric. Anything long, really, and straight will work. Pull the fabric over, use the point of whatever you use to make your corners crisp, poke your corners out, and just flip it. And you can take an iron and press this if you would like it to be a little more crisp, but I just kind of take my scissors, run it along the edge, and just kind of flatten it out. And that will be your loop. So we've got our loop, we've got our fluffy piece, my non-fluffy fluffy piece. We've got our outside cover, which we're now going to flip right side in. Put your arm in there, grab it, pull it out. And then just run your fingers along the seam to push out your boot. And there it is. Now we're going to take the fluffy piece and fit it to the outside of your sock, but you're going to line your seams up together. Okay. 
seam against my seam. And then I'm just going to fit it around the edge of the stocking. Mine was pretty much a perfect fit there. Alright. Make sure those seams are nice and lined up together. Now we're going to take our loop that we just made. We're going to take the two, I've got some of my strings off here. The strings just hanging everywhere. Okay, we're going to take the two ends, put them together, line them up against the seam with the liner and the stocking. Now everything is along that back heel seam and we're going to pin it. Then we're going to take your liner sock, stocking, still inside out, and we're going to fit that on top of everything else. Let me zoom in a little so you can see what I'm doing here. If I can get it open. Now everything is right side out except for the liner. The liner's still inside out. And you're going to fit that over the top of everything, again, lining up that seam. So you've got your seam, your loop, your seam, and your seam. Take your pin out and repin all of those seams. And then just fit that around. Make sure that everything lines up. Everything's really flush. And I have to because you don't want to have a lot of material bunching up. You want everything to really fit nicely, and you want all the seams to line up together. All right, I have mine where I want mine. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna sew along the edge of all these pieces together. If you have a machine like mine that's built for sewing circles, you can do so. If not, you're just gonna have to set it down, set your foot on the inside and slowly sew around. But for me, I'm able to Make sure everything's together here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start just a little bit before that area where the seam comes together so that I can go back over it and come back together a couple of times. And so. got everything sewn, you're going to pull it out, you're going to find that open piece, stick your hand in, pull all of your stocking through along with your liner piece. And then you're going to push your liner. Make sure your liner pops out and now that we have the two ends, your fluffy piece and your liner, we're going to sew up that hole in the liner and because it is the inside, we're not going to make it super fancy, we're just going to line it up, sew it shut. Then you're going to 
Open it up and shove your liner inside where it belongs. It's all going to start coming together now. Really take a minute and get your stocking to align. Push your toe of your boot and your heel out. Then you're going to take your fluffy piece and turn it in on itself till it's about half its own size. Might have to take this out, fold it down to where you want it if you have an extra long piece like mine and then fold it back around. lined up the way you like it. Find your ribbon and your loop and pull that out. And now you have your very own handmade beautiful Christmas stocking with a liner and a fluffy non-fluffy piece. <laughs> and it So that's it. Super quick and easy. It took me about 20 minutes once I kind of got rolling, got all my materials and everything laid out. Um, you can completely customize these. And just to let you guys know, you don't have to go out and buy any expensive fabric. I made this out of a dish towel I got on clearance for a dollar at Walmart. Um, a fleece blanket. They sell them at Walmart. The big fleece blankets for about $2.50. They're, they're thin, but if you roll them and fold them in half, it makes a nice thick fleece material. The liner is a piece of remnant I got for a dollar and the remnant's been I always shop there because I'm frugal mama and I love to make crafts but it's a bin of all the leftover pieces. They generally wrap them up, you get whatever the leftover piece, whatever size it is, at a discount. So I pick them up for under three dollars for giant, not giant, but big enough for craft size pieces. This is a piece of ribbon. I got the entire spool of ribbon for 50 cents. So I made this stocking for under $5 and I have a lot of extra material. I probably could have made two out of that one. Um, same thing on this. This is two fat quarter pieces I got at Walmart for 97 cents each. This in the liner is the green remnant I got for $1.72 and that's an extra piece of the fat quarter. So this stocking was under five dollars um so you shop the remnant bin look at fleece blankets that are on sale go to ross and get blankets and and things like that pillowcases on sale you can make these out of things that you have around your house um cheap fabric fat quarters that you get for a buck each and really customize them on the cheap so don't think that you have to go spend ten dollars a yard on these quilted thick fabrics. Yes, they look nice, but they're not necessary. So you can make them from what you have. So find some material on the cheap, use what you have, get the dollar fat quarters from Walmart, look at your remnant spin and use what you have. So don't feel like you have to spend a bunch of money to make these. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please, please tag me on social media if you recreate these. I want to see your creations. I love seeing your guys' projects. And comment down below and let me know what you're going to be making this year, what kind of stockings. And I am looking forward to seeing what you make. Thank you again for watching this video. And um, subscribe if you think you are interested in my content, if you haven't already. I have lots of cool videos coming up and lots of DIYs for the holidays. So. Stay tuned for those, and I will see you guys soon. Mm -hmm.